Dr. Sharon Wolverton Sihan. Super excited today. I'm really, really actually looking forward to this conversation because today is for April 4th, 2024. Lots of fours there. And we have a lot of energies that we can work with on that. And we know that the news and what have you has a lot of stuff going on. And we are here to alchemize and to give a different spin and perspective and talk about that today. So very, very happy to have um, Marissa and Laura and of course, co of course, my co-host Craig with me today to have that discussion and to just see where this goes. Um, welcome, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us, having me, Charnel, and Craig, and always great to see you, Laura. Um, so happy to be here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, go on, Laura. Go on, Laura. You go. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so much attention on this particular eclipse and what everybody's talking about, I think, yeah, can can rattle the nerves of anyone especially with, oh, the National Guard, they're being called upon and they're going to be right on the eclipse line and this and that is going on with CERN. And and we have to remember, this is a war on consciousness. This is a frequency battle. And this eclipse really, you know, being on the nodal axis, which eclipses are, is a huge growth period for humanity. And four planets, including Chiron, the asteroid, are right there um, in, in this eclipse, like... So the attention is on us healing, being on the healing path, being the warriors we are, doing the healing work within ourselves and being of service to humanity and, you know, bringing about solutions and and where we need to be accountable for the wounds that we have. Because people that are unconscious to it either act out and fall into the divide and conquer or the battle or the war, or they mask it and don't want to look at that. And... Uh, you know, so everybody's falling into a different level of how that is impacting them. And so Mars is our creative energy. It's our willpower. And so where are we being pulled into the victimhood or the fear versus, you know, being on the healing path and 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 moving through it, holding strong our intent and our ability to manifest? Because that's what's being targeted, our belief systems, our fears, uh, our hopes. And we really just got to, you know, take it upon ourselves to be in that I am creator self integrated with our soul, our divine purpose, and not compartmentalized into this inverted matrix and all the different, you know, things coming at us all the time that are really trying to derail us and our creative energy. So I'll, I'll just sort of start with that. But also, I, I want to um, add a little bit to that. And that is, we all know that Hollywood gets storylines from the Pentagon, from the CIA, mm -hmm. that the media is basically owned by the CIA and the Pentagon. I mean, Mockingbird Media. I mean, if you, I could, I hear like James Taylor and Carly Simon singing Mockingbird every time I think about the media at this point. It's ridiculous. So mm -hmm. we can't let them control the narrative, we can't let them control the storyline of our lives. We need to overturn it, invert the inversion, and create our own storyline. This all starts with us. So I just wanted to put that out there and basically echo what Laura is talking about, but also from, since I come from media, the narrative perspective. Yes. Hey, so, um, yeah, so naturally, I mean, if by now we haven't figured out that the way that the powers that work like to function is to get people into fear because fear produces the energy they can use to manipulate humanity um, where we've we been. Um, so I, I just think like anything, like, I mean, if we, like Laura, you, you know, you, you've been saying this stuff for years, we need to learn to cooperate with creation and not against it. And, and when these things are happening, they're happening for us and we need to work with it, you know? Um, and, and if we're fearing what's going on, then we're not working with it. And I think that is an agenda of the, the powers that were, uh, to get us into fear and, you know, CERN and shooting rockets into the eclipse and all this kind of stuff. And there's people saying, oh, they're going to fake the alien invasion because everyone's going to be looking at the sky. And it's just like, oh, can we stop? <laughs> That's my opinion anyway. Um, <clears throat> you know, I just think, you know, I think I think it was Tyler Koala from Journey to Truth said something very interesting that the last eclipse, you know, that what happened after that, oh, that's it. It's when... 
the letter 17 popped up just after that and and we all know the chaos that caused and and the raucous and the and the awakening that, that, that happened with many people in that movement regardless of what you think about it right right last time the north node it was in aries during think, eclipse time go ahead oh I, yeah you cut off keep going exactly. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, what was it up to? Oh, you said last time there was an eclipse, something about 17? Oh, yeah, there was a lot of war energy, Chernobyl even, just some yeah. sort of major, you know, kind of disaster. And it doesn't mean that this has to happen. Um, our focused intent is so important. I mean, there's some things that are out of our control, but I mean we're here for soul development and we're here to overcome and override and do the best we can in our observance of, you know, events that might take place. But uh, I mean, again, right. The powers that were only had power based on what it was stealing and siphoning and harvesting. So we need to call that vital energy back and focus okay. on the light and focus on a future that we want to manifest. And, you know, there is some sort of bifurcation, to a certain degree. I mean, I don't know what exactly that's going to look like, but you know, we have to choose and and be very conscious of our thought forms. And Mercury retrograde is going to help us really self-reflect on, you know, what do we need to transmute and heal versus yeah, letting that energy go elsewhere. So, yeah. You know, another thing that I think about often is I've heard reports about how when people go work in the dumps, they have to sign some kind of contract. And that is they can't ever mention the name Jesus. Did you guys ever hear about this? That's the mm -hmm. one thing they're afraid of is they're afraid of Jesus. So I wonder, I mean, what I'm going to do is basically make sure I'm linked in, linked up to the higher consciousness, to, you know, the life force, to the Christ consciousness and really you know, do my battle, be the light water. I feel like we are here to be light warriors and I'm going to stay connected to that consciousness because, you know, we, the people can free the people if we're connected to something higher, to the consciousness, to the power, to, to the Christ consciousness. I mean, I'm calling on Jesus and all the saints and the blessed mother in heaven. And, you know, that's who I'm lined up with. I'm not going to give any credence to any of these psychopathic bastards that think they control us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I hadn't heard that before. Where did you see that? Is that like Philip? What's his I, name? The guy I, under I don't know. I got to like, I got to find it. And, you know, I look at, everything and then like sometimes it's three o'clock in the morning i wish i saved it but i mean I'll, I'll try and find it but somebody said that they that's that's like what they do and then i was like thinking about like elon musk do you do you know this story about his his babysitter or his nanny did you ever hear yeah. this oh. all right his name elon is not his real name it's el elion which means god god on most high right I yes, which is which is a mockery of the God God in the Hebrew um, Old Testament, right? Mm -hmm. Which is God God of most on Most High. So he's oh. a mockery, and his mother also went to go visit Charles Manson and was having relations with him when he was he's in prison, right? So what? basically, yeah. So basically there is this woman, she goes and says that she was his babysitter and that she was babysitting Elon. And he had all these little Egyptian God, you know, like figurines. And he's like, come see my friends. And like, he opened a portal and she got sucked in. And the only thing, and she, they were going to eat her like Horus or one of those gods, they were going to eat her. Like they were huge in the portal and they were going to eat her. And she called out the name Jesus and she flew out. And Elon, he was eight years old, was furious. And he's like, you didn't like my friends. So that's an account that she said, I'm, I'm just quoting. So that's why I'm saying I'm aligned with Jesus. And that's so weird because he has such good scalar wave scores. He does now. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, you know, and yeah, and you know about the book about um, 
Elon being the president of Mars and stuff like that. Have you heard? I, I choose to remember all that. Um, some book about us having life on Mars on the president's name. I mean, the president of Mars was Elon. And you know how he's like. Yes. That's Bill Moore's father who wrote that book, isn't it? Somebody's. I did. Who wrote it? Was that Bill William Barr's father? I do remember hearing about that. Yeah. And another thing, too, is you can't really make decisions when you're in a vibration of survival or fear. Things tend to just pull you into, you know, the chaoticness. It's easier to you know, make decisions that aren't coming from your higher guidance or your intuition, which always knows what is best for you. And to have that get all scrambled up or disconnected. I mean, it's so right on what you're saying, Marissa, because that Christ consciousness is that direct link between our higher self and source energy and that Christ light. So it's just, yeah, really important that, you know, the Chiron energy, we move to the higher octave of what these planetary alignments represent instead of the inversion. So when we look at the South node as a foundational energy that we're reflecting upon, that we're, um, you know, checking in with to move forward, to integrate this stand in our truth and our power, we have to look at, you know, what relationships are not in harmony with the direction that we need to go. Are we being yanked down into a lower vibration by anything outside of us or even relationships or our relationship with our job or just ourselves? Um, because that internal harmony and balance is critical in, you know, moving forward and to reflect upon that. So we make the necessary changes to be in that, you know, healing vibration versus, being yanked down to the lower vibration because we all handle wounds differently. You know, we're either accountable, we're either aware and mindful of what we need to do to become, you know, the healer for others and ourselves or, yeah, I mean, or, or fall prey to all these different tactics or feeling like we, you know, um, don't deserve more than what we're getting and compromising ourselves because we think that there's nothing else for us. And, I just wanted to point that out with the South node. So a lot of people are like going through like major upheaval, but it's always an upgrade. If you can see it from the perspective of your higher self, all these adversities can challenge us to reclaim the things that have been dormant versus getting more and more dumbed down and assimilated into, you know, these artificial timelines that have no power except for the power we give it. That's the key is the power we give it. Um, I love that. Bob um, Stevens used to say, um, I think it was St. Germain that he would quote that said, um, if I am aware of anything outside of God, I cannot know God. And I'm like, that's a lot of things that we could be aware of. That are outside. <laughs> you know, it's like, how do we, you know, that's a lot of discipline to be able to only focus i mean that's every post that's every word that's every thought that's every you know even giving ear to things um and, and i'm not a big you know i look at the bible like quantum physics but it says um be careful what you give ear to uh because it because it will be given unto you and mm -hmm. so you know i looked at that a lot about like gossip and stuff at first but now i'm even looking at it as this whole mockingbird thing it's just like, wow, if we give ear to it, we're actually even participating in the creation of it. And you mentioned the singers. Um, and I think you mentioned something about sing people who sing about uh, Carly oh, Simon and them. Carly Simon and James Taylor. Remember they had that, that duet, Mockingbird, Mock, yeah, ing, yeah, bird, yeah, yeah Mockingbird. Yeah. 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 Anyone have you heard? Country yeah. star um, who's from this area, his name's Hardy. And he is like the most authentic person ever. And he just got like super uber famous, but he sings about kind of being pissed off that they're using him as a mockingbird. And he said, you know what? He's basically ditching the mockingbird and saying, I I'd rather be the crow, you know? Um, Cause he's, he, he talks about how, you know, do the, his lyrics are like, do this, do that. Um, wear this shirt but not that hat smile, do, you know, telling him all what to do. And he was like, well, tell that to all the dumb, you know, people, not to, not to all the dumb, but all to the people who come to see my face on their shirt, you know, like they're wearing my shirt. They came to see me, let me do me, you know? And so I think he's like caught up 
in it and realizing how caught up he is and kind of trapped in it and expressing that through song, you know, just like this mockingbird situation, but it's sad. It's really sad. And then even with all this stuff in the news with Diddy and, you know, Bieber and Usher and all this, it's like, God, it's so sad. It is sad, but it's also, I mean, you know, many of us came to this came to light many years ago for many of us. Um, this kind of thing that's going on. And if, if we're going to have kind of like the change that we, we're all expecting, it's going to have to come to the surface. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, the key is what we're going to do when it does. You know, we're going to chase them down with pitchforks or we're going to seek true healing, you know. Oh. Um, and personally, you know, we can't use the, the old system or systems to, to create the new earth. You know, we're going to have to create totally new systems. And I, I personally believe it's going to be systems of grace. And, and um, that's not by that me saying that that's not mean people just get free, you know, oh, well, never mind, don't do it again. You know, but, but you know, redemption and, and helping people who are trapped because traumatized people traumatize people. You know, a lot of these people who are doing these horrible things are also victims. Um, and they need healing as much as anybody else. And, and again, I'm not justifying the things that they've done by any stretch of the imagination. But I think our sense of justice is going to have to shift slightly because, believe me, I would like nothing more to see some of these figures who've done these awful things put down. You know. However, I also recognise that, that what better testimony would be to see them restored and back in their divinity. Exactly. Um, go on, Laura, have you got anything on that? Absolutely. I mean... Wow. Look at the ones that are overcoming MK Ultra SRA. They're telling their stories, what they were born into, uh, the altars that they're contending with and how they're working to integrate that, heal that, override that, overcome it. And yeah, we have to understand multi-generational trauma-based mind control. These people aren't really operating in their authentic self at all. They're, they're running altars that, that have been programmed into them to be activated and switched on uh, during certain times. And I've talked to people that say they run altars or they did that were uh, groomed or, or programmed to play a certain role in these times. And, and so there are those that are recovering from that. And then there's those that are still caught up in that. And, and the more we understand, the more it's going to inspire the healing process versus you know people staying in 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 that web or or blackmailed or afraid to come forward because of something used against them when they might have been drugged i mean we have to have it all out on the table and i think you know this chiron aries and attention on all of that we see so many documentaries about people calling out the abuses from cult leaders from their families from the entertainment industry when they were children. I mean, every everything is coming out, you know, for healing. So we have to be, um, you know, aware of that and hold space for that and, 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 you know, not brand it the enemy because the few that are the dark lords that are perpetuating it are so few compared to the amount of people they programmed and um, abused and traumatized. So, you know, we really need to help those that have been victimized by this. Absolutely. So I just wanted to add that. Yeah. Also, I wanted to say that, um, you know, there, the whole celebrity worship thing, mm -hmm. you know, how, well, I mean, this whole culture, you know, the red carpet, which is like symbolizes the blood of people. I mean, I've heard that. And then like, you know, celebrity like stars, they're like lesser stars. They're like kind of like, on the chain of the illum illumined, the Illumin Illuminati. So they're, but they're part of that whole structure. I mean, to to worship them, to you know, look at them as idols. Like, I mean, to me, that's pagan worship. And, and also, the thing is, like, you know, when you go on Facebook and Instagram, and people say, "Oh, like," there are people saying, "I want to wish like Nicole Kidman a happy birthday." Well, there's no. <laughs> I mean, like that to me is the height of like lunacy why would you wish somebody you don't even know who doesn't know who you are happy birthday when you i mean are you talking to the people who do have a happy birthday who are your friends i mean i just think that you know look at the people around you who love you and show them that love exactly. and, and the whole thing about worshiping celebrities it's like they're like read 
actors are reading scripts. They're just, I mean, were written by, as we know, the CIA and most of them, not all of them, but I just think that um, I hope and pray that there is a new version of Hollywood, which isn't Hollywood anymore, that where we tell our stories and we get to make, we, we get to say, we get to talk about things that, and we get to flip the script that have more meaning, that are more heart-based, that are more where the human is the hero as opposed the, to the superhero. I mean, I think Ordin tales of ordinary people doing extraordinary things to yeah, me are yeah. much more inspiring anyway. So I just wanted to put that out there. Absolutely. It's just crazy. The headlines of, you know, somebody's dog died, you know, some celebrity's dog died, or they just went and um, were shown sitting next to so-and-so. Oh, and they shared a kiss. It's like, who cares? It's like, who are these people? It's like they've taken over um, just even what they do in their daily lives. And I, absolutely agree when you think of mockingbird media too it mimics right so the archons mm -hmm. mimic they can't create on their own so yeah. they invert the growth periods of humanity with psyops with false news to mimic what's actually going on but in a way that causes us to continually look outside of ourselves whether it's celebrity whether it's doctors whether it's the educational system to regurgitate whatever indoctrination program and all that is collapsing and it's mm -hmm. very traumatic for people to dismantle the subpersonality of false ego, which is also the Chiron, you know, mm -hmm. do you realize that that's not really you? And are you ready to heal? Which really means deprogram and drop that. So your true authentic self can rise. It doesn't attach to labels and mm -hmm. it doesn't um, overly identify with something to the point where it negates anybody else who's not in agreement. Cause that's the strategy really is, is for us all to not get along. Cause unity consciousness is the greater force that um, will give them no access to parasite off of the loosh that is created when there's so much conflict and division. So I oh. agree. And we united is what they fear the most. Mm -hmm. So let's well, like not to mention let's, let's get them the something of it all. Like mention, you know, the destruction part of it all too. It's like, hey, look over here at these two people kissing and la 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 or this breakup or whatever. And really like there's a sleight of hand going on over, you know, wherever, why they're signing so-and-so bill or whatever, because we were so focused on the thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you remember it, Charnel, um, but I'm, <laughs> certainly because I grew up evangelical, um, and there was always this, this mission to evangelize celebrities so that they would then influence the culture in the way we wanted them to influence culture. So it's like in every facet of society, that there's this celebrity worship. If only we just would win the celebrities, you know what I mean? And, and I, I see it daily that the, the whole, and I'm talking on every level, celebrity culture is, is, is dying a death um, because A, people are becoming more sovereign. They're realizing they are no better than me. You know, <laughs> we're all the same. We're all one, you know, um, and they're realizing how these, these often, well, they used people are just puppets for the the grand agenda that they're pushing. And I mean, I remember when uh, Billie Eilish was getting popular, and my daughter loved Billie Eilish. And I said, "Just you watch; she'll start turning, and she'll start trying to influence culture in a certain way, you know, that goes along with the agenda." And lo and behold, she becomes bisexual, then she starts doing topless photos, that sort of thing. And I'm just like, "I told you, you know." But when she was younger, she was just this innocent sort of hip hop girl, you know. Mm -hmm. um and i just and so my daughter can see it now you know she, she recognizes it she probably still likes the music but uh <laughs> whatever um but yeah i just think this this whole celebrity worship i mean it's in the disclosure community i see it all the time you know we need mm -hmm. to be told what to think by a certain character or a certain voice well i value every voice and everybody's got mm -hmm. a voice everybody has a voice mm -hmm. and if somebody's is taking a you know, a session at a conference or something, I really value that time. But ultimately, we're all the same. We all have a voice and we all have a perspective and we all have a part to play in the grand picture. And I think that's what's really uh, coming to the forefront now, um, that, that a, 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 set, a true sense of equality um, in, the, in that we are all in this together. And um, and I think it's really exciting. And I, I am sort of some, sometimes hopelessly optimistic about the future. You know, I can see the stuff that's going on. And I, I don't know if anyone else has noticed as well, they're really, really ramping up the agendas over the past sort of month or two. Um, you know, really pushing sort of, I'm not going to name agendas, but you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, just just that really are a sickness in our culture that we've accepted. Um, and, uh, and and I've been getting triggered by it, and, I, and I've had to pull back and recognize, like, they're doing it to trigger me. You know what I mean? And and just to keep your love on, keep heart centered, and not get not get drawn into the fight, which is t- is hard sometimes because I want to. <laughs> Wow. We've got to stay heart centered. I agree because, like, that's the thing. Like, that they want to cut our hearts out, but yeah. you know, it just stays strong and stay human and right, stay heart based, right? Mm-hmm. Totally. Exactly that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't yeah, lose your heart. Totally, it is trying to break our hearts and uh, yeah, look outside of ourselves. And that's why I always compare it to just you know cutting the cords with this dependency bond, with this giving your power away with. Um, you know, even when you're just in reaction mode because you're seeing through it and how much is that taking your, you know, vital energy and it's in its death throes. That's why it's so desperate because this is such a powerful window. And it's always been that window of waking up ascension, the great awakening, a shift into higher earth energies. It's really a shift within ourselves, winning the war within ourselves to break the bonds, to break the dependency bond, um, with any of it. And, uh, yeah, it's really wild because when you see like movies in the predictive programming, even like Hunger Games, if you look at the how they're just exaggerated in their dressing, you know, how they dress and sort of the transhumanism, transgender, and then these districts. Um, yeah, uh, and, and the technologies and all this and that, because the shadow side of the Aquarian age is dark technology, transhumanism. The higher octave is authenticity, living your truth, being authentic mm-hmm. and uh, standing in your power in that sort of way, which is what Jupiter Uranus conjunct are doing. And then we're moving into the Saturn Pisces, Neptune Pisces into Aries as it goes through the nodal axis that is going to be Pisces, North node, South node, Virgo, which is calling us to really focus on body, mind, spirit integration, to look at the physical symptoms and look at what is behind it, what distortions, what ancestral patterns, what programmings are causing the body to not thrive. What did you put in your body that also wants your mind, right? Because the two go hand in hand. And when we begin to cut that away and reconnect, I feel there's nothing that we can't transmute and alchemize, even if it's bioweapon, whether it's what you've been eating your whole life that isn't very good for you. You know, the healing power and the regenerative power within us, you know, we're being pushed to the edge to reclaim. And then we realize how powerful we are as humans. And there's nothing we can't overcome. We just have to get our minds back because that is the creative vessel that makes magic right and all this black magic trickery yeah it's in its final death throes so um yeah we just have to just be mindful all the time r.i.p black magic trickery that's what i say amen (laughs) (laughs) yeah so uh that's april 8th and uh yeah So I I think it's a really good idea to just go into nature, shut down your devices, put them in a Faraday bag (laughs) and just breathe deep. And, uh, you know, what, what is your focus and intention? Because the Saturn energy is really grounding Neptune wants to make our belief systems more solidified in reality. That's why there's such a war on the mind Mm -hmm. because that's eventually going to become a very grounded reality. That's going to be hard to unwind from. So here's Mm -hmm. the opportunity to ground and anchor our dreams and visions, have a huge boundary with that Saturn you know, Mm -hmm. law of structure, like how can we hold a safe container, sacred container for this vital creative power and energy and not let anything, you know, leak in. And when we're traumatized and wounded, sometimes it's easy to allow something to come in, but we have each other, we have healing Mm -hmm. tools and modalities, we have our thought processes that we can take, you know, more control over. And, uh, and then we notice the synchronicities, the magic and the flow and all of it, you know, falling into place a lot easier. And uh, so, Laura, you know what you said about the Faraday bag and shutting off your devices, I think that is so important. It's so important to what you take in, like don't take in the matrix food, don't take in the matrix water, sure. um, go out in nature, walk barefoot, um, put your phone in a Faraday bag when you're sleeping in another room. Maybe if you have an infrared red light, put that on and just really connect with source. And I really think that this is the time to do that. I, I find that when I'm too connected, I can't even hear my thoughts. I'm just kind of vibrating on like the, this kind of thing, you know, and it's like, not like I can't 
like it's hard to focus. I think the less you're on social media at this time, I mean, I'm always going to have my phone on because we talk all the time, but, <laughs> but I feel like this is a really crucial time where we just stay connected to source and the people we love and, and, and really even like watching television, what we watch, what, because that's also taking stuff in and the music we listen to. I mean, because we find out that, you know, the Beatles were Tavistock and the Rolling Stones, like there was, you know, there is stuff thrown in like dark sorcery was thrown in when the, when they were recording um, and different music and the, the hurts and how that was adjusted. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think we need to, take the offensive and whatever we put into our bodies, whatever we hear, whatever we see, that's also internalizing stuff in too. So I think it's becoming, as we become more conscious, become more conscious of what's in our consciousness. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we alluded to it before as well, is that there's going to have to be a cultural revolutionary explosion um, at mm -hmm. some point because um, just today, um, my wife went to the cinema to watch a film, which was a re remake of an old film, or, or so not a remake, but like it, it was the Ghostbusters film, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm so out of tune with stuff now, I don't even know what's on. But she said that every single trailer before it was a remake of an old film, every single one. And it's like this level of creativity is just gone. That's um, so true. Is yeah. They're remaking everything. They're really remaking everything. Like, they're, they're not, house, like yep. all I never thought every about that. Film is a remake because they're not. They're, they're, there's no imagination anymore. There's no creative flair, um, and I genuinely believe that as people, many people have lost touch with their own soul. They've lost the creativity, and we really need to tap into that heart space again. And we're going to start seeing again. And you know, I truly believe that there is going to be an explosion of art and creativity um, that, that's going to reflect a higher consciousness, a higher state of awareness. And, um, you know, I'm looking for those artists. I'm looking for those those films. You know, I watched Lord of the Rings. It's one of my favourite series of films ever. I mean, I get lost in those films. But, that that yeah, the films are great, don't get me wrong, but they came from the imagination of, of Tolkien, you know. The guy mm -hmm. created the language. The guy was, was – he was operating in another world. And, and those stories literally – shaped an entire generation, you know, in, into mystical things. And when you actually look at some of the things he was saying, like how, you know, for example, the orcs used to be elves um, before they fell, you know, and I'm just thinking, is he relating this to some ancient species? You know, what did he really know? Um, mm -hmm. And it opens up many, many questions. And although it's fiction, how fiction is it? Exactly. And this is what I'm looking for, you know, and, and, and I'm looking for the filmmakers, the storytellers who can re-tap into that, imagination realm which is actually tapping into higher consciousness okay but here's a question right here's the thing maybe there are people who are actually doing that mm -hmm. but it's the gatekeepers that are blocking them okay right. like hollywood okay they don't want that out there or like books publishers they don't want that out there. Look at what's being published. Look what's look at the movies that are being regurgitated. It's like regurgita, all of it, right? Or what we've been talking about. Look at the magazines. Look at what they're publishing. I'm a New Yorker cartoonist. I can't tell you how many cartoons I've done about the globalists. I mean, do you think I'm going to publish that there? Like, I've gotten one there that I can't even believe. But, I mean... Seriously, we need to like establish our own platforms and fund our own movies and fund our own books and just totally flip everything and invert it back to the way it's been all along. Yes, because look at everybody get, being educated by the system, doctors, teachers, lawyers. I mean, and, and, and in this window of what took place 2019, 2020 with you know what, mm -hmm. uh, it was really asking, uh, are you are you going to live in your highest integrity and not be compromised? Are you going to go along with it? And, and mm -hmm. so this was a huge breaking point and a huge test. Like, okay, let's, let's redirect those skills and abilities into building, you know, community and new structures to homeschool, to have educational centers that um, are protecting the sacredness of the children and what their mission or calling is not trying to confuse them and indoctrinate them and where can the skills of doctors you know move in the direction of 
um, medical freedom and respect for the co-creation of your health plan with the individual instead of, nope, you have no choice. You have to take this or you're fired. Or if you don't do this, you're fired. Or if you don't follow this protocol, we're not going to allow you into this hospital. Um, or, you know, some of the ramifications on even a legal level of, you know, speaking truth and standing for freedom, even in a nonviolent way, just because it goes against the mockingbird media narrative. I mean, it's just insane. I mean, I think there's so much to drain in the swamp. Why don't we just turn our attention to rebuild something new and starve the swamp? Because yeah. you know, it's really entangling us in something that I think is producing more harm than good. And at this point, mm -hmm. if the election doesn't happen, we don't lose those leaders. Let's look to building new structures where we can come together and the leaders inspire other leaders to stand up and we're a unified front instead of always looking outside for that one person to save the day. Yeah. yeah. Why can't we just lead ourselves? What do we even need them for, right? I think we just take control of the system, like you say, Laura. It's yeah. not like ignoring what's in the swamp, but it's advocating. It's it's mm -hmm. helping to usher souls over here. Like, like mm -hmm. let's pull you out. Here's the mm -hmm. lifeboat. Here's the life preserver. But ultimately, it's you saving yourself. But we're all doing this within ourselves and coming together in, you know, in, in, in <laughs> mutual love and respect, no matter what our differences. It's just yeah. this is the missions that we've been called to do. And mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, yeah, like ignore all that, but uh, if, if, yeah, we had the rehabilitation centers and the healing centers, and, and like you were talking about, Craig, we understand why these dark players have been playing, you know, this, this, this game that we can, you know, do better pulling, you know, as much out as we can so that whatever's left in that swamp will go down the cosmic toilet bowl. <laughs> and for <Yeah>. that, dust. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, um, Someone's just saying if uh, we make another movie to make them more woke or politically correct, that, that's possible. They could, you know, they are destroying some old classics, but whatever. Um, but I think, you know, it comes down to, and I heard this oh, a couple of years ago, you know, we're not here to, to fight the old, we're here to create the new and be aware of what's going on. You know, we, we need to know what's going on uh, and the tactics that they use against us and things. Um, but I know so many people who are still trapped in the doom and gloom they're still trapped in the focusing on what they're doing. And it's like, right, we know what they're doing. So what are we going to do? You know, um, and we and it affects our vibration. When we're so focused on the doom and gloom, like what, you know, Bill Gates is doing or whatever, um, we're, we're stuck in that, that mindset. And we will forever feel like slaves to them because they hold the wealth and they hold the power and this, that, and the other. But they only hold the wealth and power of a system that is falling apart. We need to create new systems that actually benefits the whole collective equally. Um, and I, I truly believe that there isn't going to be an emergence of leaders, not from a political point of view, but just people that are just people of action. We're going to do this, you know, um, and, and we're going to create from a heart space and, and we're going to protect that um, violently if necessary. <laughs> you know, we, we have a, um, a structure here that we want people to benefit from. We want people to grow and experience higher consciousness and, and, and become better or whatever you want to call it. And um, yeah, I'm looking for that. I really am looking for that. You know, I'm, I'm dabbling in the music world and things like that. And, and I can already see where the gatekeepers are. I can already see the control that they have. And, you know, um, because they have the money, they say, right, here's the money. Now you're going to do this, this, and this. And it's like, if you deviate from that, we'll pull the money. And they completely control you. And this has got to stop. It's got to end. This, this, but it this. is, though. I mean, it is in one sense because, like, there's all these woke movies, these woke remakes, they're bombing. I mean, they are. That's true. They are. Like, yeah. Disney's in trouble. All these yeah. film studios are, like, really not doing too well. They're canceling mm -hmm. films. And uh, so I think if the public says no the more we we don't go the mo more we don't support their agenda and create our own uh music and movies and art and and just tap into our consciousness and create from our heart space right i mean that's another way we win right yeah. and when we do that anyway when we're painting drawing writing making music you know like there's such a vibration to that anyway that brings not only something within us but adds to the collective i mean mm -hmm. even watching a video of um craig and his you know he's right into his thing you know playing live over in england but i was watching and i was like that is 
it's just so him and he was in his element and it was just such a cool vibration and we all have our own um you know everybody has their own little synced in time when we're it's like this is our thing and we're doing it and it's like we were born for this and there's something that really affects the realm literally um i was just i just finished up advanced pranic healing and we would measure people's biofields before and after prayer before and after like a meditation before and after just thinking about something that we would do that that we love doing and it literally would change the field of of the person um before and after and it, sometimes it was a pretty huge dramatic measurement that would shift and what what kind of cool world would we be in if like literally everybody was out of their stupid jobs that they hate or out of their partnerships that they hate or you know just all those things that shrink shrink the realm and take away you know and just be in the thing that they love and and be compensated for it you know and to, to be able to ha make a living doing the thing that they really really love doing and not have to worry about finances or how to make ends meet or just you know stress about it you know yeah indeed yeah it's gonna be an amazing world <laughs> yeah mother earth provides i mean there's so much that comes with choosing to do that you you get your energy back you get your thoughts back that aren't constantly trying to solve things, fix things, heal things with something that is not wanting to join in with you. I mean, it, it's 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 too much. And uh, growing food and being self-sufficient is not as it's it's a lot more abundant than you know this false sense of security because you're getting a paycheck. I mean, that's compromising you. Relationships compromise a person, and you know some people just don't have the self-esteem or or the feeling that because of abuse, because of manipulation, because of uh, maybe the way that they were raised and the reward system and uh, stigmas that people carry when they might not have performed well in school, but they actually have something else going on. I mean, all that has to be, you know, looked at because we know exactly in our soul what we're here to do and uh, and moving away from all that is, is critical. Um, it's amazing how everything you know really starts to fall into place and i we all know it because we did that ourselves doesn't mean okay. it's always easy there's targeting there's attack but you know um let's let it make us stronger because we know um how threatened they are by the very things that you know they're they're choosing to target and uh if we shield that and stay strong and in alignment with it then they don't get a piece of it and it, it comes down to our lifestyle our relationships the food we eat and everything like you said marissa and um so anyway, yeah, we can rebuild and, um, and there's so much of that already going on retreats. You can take, you know, just, and, and, you know, e e even if there's a concern about money, it's just like, it it's amazing how regenerative, you know, all of this is when you have the power within your being to stand strong in your true purpose, because that money system is just a false representation of our true abundance, mm -hmm. you know, being able to generate, you know, the needs of our self and what our bodies need. It's, it's, it's like your book about miracles. Miracles aren't just some anomaly. It's, it's our capacity to connect with our higher self in the face of adversity and see something beautiful show up. That's taking us to the next level instead of uh, what we've been taught to think. So uh, I'll tell you what to you yesterday was rough and I had four consultations after being at the hospital and then going back to the hospital and I had to move some things around and there was one that I didn't, that I just felt like, and I have no idea. I mean, I, when people come through, I just see a name. I don't know who, I don't know any background. I don't know what I'm getting into when I'm working with someone. And this girl comes through 16 years old, the most brilliant, bright, freaking radiant, abundant life that I have maybe talked to in the universe so far. <laughs> I mean, this girl was so deep. She's writing books. She's an artist. She's, um, when I talked to her, I said, well, how are you, you know, how's it, how are you? And you know, what, what's your story? And I could tell that she was young, but she didn't straight up say how old she was at the beginning. And, you know, her parents are in Vietnam right now for a month. She's at home by herself. 
And I was like, wow, you know, isn't that scary being at home by yourself? Hopefully you have like some relatives with you or something. And um, she was like, no, I really look at this as an opportunity to really find out who I am. And, you know, I mean, she was just, I was like, what this woman, she's such an old soul and this little 16 year old body. And it gave me so much hope for the future, you know, because I I was thinking about it and I'm not trying to be a bitch, but, but I was thinking about the saying when people say things like, you know, enjoy your kids while they're young. And I used to always think that meant like, because, you know, they're going to grow up and you won't have that time again. And they just, it happens so fast and stuff. But now I'm starting to think a little bit differently about that saying is because they're so sweet when they're little and they're, you know, they kind of don't have a choice about things and they just are excited about the, the fun, you know, the things that you're excited about and whatever. And as they get older, sometimes it's not so fun and easy. And, um, but this kid, I was like, wow, like, and she just started a podcast and she was talking about her confidence and her fear and her doubt about it, but she's doing it with two other kids that are like 14 and 16. I said, well, what is it about? And she's like, we just want to help teenagers like us to really know the truth and help them find themselves and help them find their destiny. And I'm like, Shout out. let's get them on. Let's get them on. I said, can you guys be on our show? I would love to have you. Let's let's talk to him. I would love that. She starts crying and I'm just like, (laughs) how did this person land in my lap? You know? And I'm like, (laughs) but again, it's like energy. And I was like, I was feeling so, you know, whatever. And then she just comes in and I'm like, I don't even want to get off the phone with you. You're just amazing. You know, but it gave me a lot of hope about the future. If like anybody like this is running the country, you know, for us, I'm like, wow, I can relax, you know? <laughs> Gosh, I feel that so much when I do sessions with people and yeah, when they put their kids on and when the parent really supports because, you know, they, they understand what's going on and, and that child just really, the space is being held. And even if the parents don't support the strength is there. And so many people I've talked to you are, you know, they live on land, they're building community, they're building schools and healing centers and parents are gravitating and the kids are gravitating and, and it's the way it should be done. And the resources come, funding comes, you know, you know, it, it, it just, it's, it's worth, it's not even a risk, but it's worth, uh, you know, taking that leap because that is what cosmic and natural law and this planetary body and our awakening DNA wants from us. Anything less is continually taking a chunk out of our creative imagination, taking a chunk out of our ability to upgrade. And, um, you know, these adversities and challenges, we are up for the challenge um, to remember, you know, why we're here versus continually submitting to the uh, to the problem reaction solution. And if 9-11 wasn't enough and, and the what happened in the last couple of years, and the, the, the ridiculous theater of it all, um, I think when that bifurcation or that ship is starting to really move and get more and more assimilated, they're going to start to reroute and be like, wow, those guys are thriving. Like, they're doing great. You know, the kids are happy. They're not, like, getting sex changes and being like, who am I? What have I done? I mean, it's just yeah it's rehabilitation. But I think a lot will be rerouted because that's a sinking ship and people's soul this is their last chance to really listen to it and, and not lose that. Because look at what happened to species that did lose the soul matrix. They turned into EBEs and some grays and mm-hmm. and then they have to correct that. I'm not saying all grays are like that, but that's the trajectory of a genetically modified human is you lose mm-hmm. all that. And mm-hmm. then that crisis point of needing to regain it is part of what these species are trying to recover. Not all of them, some are you know still enslaved, but anyway. I yeah, agree. Ma'am. Well, I know you guys got to pop off too. And uh, any final words? I mean, I know for me, I'm going to try to get these kids on here. And I, again, I was like talking to them. I'm like, how did you get like this? And she's like, I do a lot of inner work. I've cut a lot of cords. Um, she's like, I've been working with my shadow self. I do wow. Essential oils. I try to be outside and get grounded. I mean, she was so humble too, but I was just like, her voice was so pure. And I'm like, oh, my God. fantastic. Yeah, I'm recording, you know, it's like, um, <laughs> but I just, my final words would be look, today is 444. And 
four represents the elements four represents creation you know um there's a lot of power in today and i'm going to actually do a meditation um for my channel for the channel um for my members tonight uh and just run frequencies for abundance and prosperity and for health and vitality and um and by the way thank you for all the members who are on here sandra and debbie and i don't know i choose to know who else is on here dana uh, and all the people who support all of you guys and all of us and what we're doing um but i again i'm choosing to do my best to stay in the positive and to stay in the creative mode of this, this day especially and use the energies to work with what we can and focus on the things that we can and just let god handle whatever else is is left and i say that meaning you know god in us um steering our disciplined minds hearts and attention towards an outcome that we choose not the other outcomes that everyone's trying to spoon feed us but our own choice of our highest outcome our highest timeline and um, we talked about that a little bit last week and if you guys missed the show last week where we were on unfortunately craig wasn't there but we talked about you know the timelines and how to change the timelines and my book talks about that um but that's what i would say and you guys can find me at drcharnel.com and i love all y'all and if you choose to join us tonight you can um be a member here and grab these energies and work with them and um just love all y'all for thank you for being with us today and any final words you guys have well my website's cosmicgaia.org and yes number four day is also the emperor which is a mars energy willpower and with that willpower aligned with you know your soul your truth your higher awareness that is such a powerful vehicle of manifestation uh, instead of it being compartmentalized or or in in you know lost in some sort of other trajectory that is exacerbating you know the wounds where you know you just grab for anything to make it go away instead of being really mindful of the gift that it actually presents. So uh, I have some events coming up. I'm going to update my website, but I have a subscription there. I do Zoom calls, and my book Awakening the Truth Frequency is out, and it's really about not my truth, but what is your truth, and uh, really getting to the bottom of what's really taking place, the dark technologies, what's really in our DNA that we can begin to look forward to activating and and living a life that is a mirror of that, because it's all about sacred union, integration of polarity, and calling in the soulmate in the real um, deep connections that um, will help us to thrive in these times and and help us to remember you know what we're capable of creating because we get to write the script here just like we've all been saying so thanks so much for having us and it's been wonderful to be with you guys before this eclipse time and i just wanted to thank you both charnel and craig for having us and um also laura and i have a show divine mother earth time of course <laughs> yes. that uh on my website yeah <laughs> and yeah, that's on Laura's website and my website. You could find me on Rumble um, because YouTube is about to kick me off and I don't know. <laughs> I'm putting all my videos. I'm starting to put all my videos on Rumble anyway. Marisa Acachella, Marisa Acachella on Instagram and Facebook and uh, look for my cartoons. I'm also in the middle of uh, putting some books together. So I have a lot happening and just thank you so much for having me. And it's always a pleasure being with all of you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm in two bands. Uh, one's called Anth Ascension. You know, we've got three albums out there. Uh, I'm currently uh, playing with a band called Ten, which actually, I did tell you, Chanel, but I'll, I'll say public eye of that. So two people come out to our first show uh, who watch the shows. Uh, who watch, um, they live in Cumbria, which is nearby, and they'll know who, I'm, who I am. They actually know the bass player of the band I'm, I'm playing with called Ten. Um, but they actually came out to our first show and introduced themselves. So if anybody's out there, check out the website, tenofficial.com, and come out to a show and come and say hello. I love meeting new people. Um, so, yeah, big shout out to them. And, uh, wow, I can't think what else there is. Usual socials, um, Craig Martin Walker on Facebook. Uh, I like you know, connect with people. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing people in, in um, Grafton, Illinois, in a month's time now. Uh, Laura's going to be there. I don't know if, if you are, Marissa, Shama, I'm still trying to 
persuade you, but anyway, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I'm coming over to the States for the first time. I'm going to try buy my first um, MAGA hat and buy, buy myself uh, stars and stripes to wear permanently. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you can find me uh, at those places. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Awesome. Well, we love you guys and thank you so much. And <laughs> you guys do me a favor and share this and... That would be really, really helpful for all of us with algorithm. If you could just take the little link and share it to your page and get the word out. I think that some people might be encouraged by some of these things that we talked about today and maybe shift the collective in general to 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 have everybody kind of together and focusing on what we choose to focus on today and to have that little reminder about our power we are so powerful we are full of power and we have the ability to create all kinds of things and no we can't outwill other people's will i'm not saying that but we as a collective can choose to do what we choose with our collective energy and we can override that frequency just like laura's book talks about i know my book talks about and by the way i didn't know you're writing a book marissa but i know Craig is also writing a book, and so I'm looking forward to both of you guys' books. I've written four. Have you really? Wow. Yeah. Tell us, tell us, quick. Yeah, The Big Shebang, The History of the Universe, According to God the Mother, Cancer Vixen, about my battle with breast cancer, um, Antenna, about a woman who is a conscious, who like gets into a vicious, vicious car accident and meets her higher self, and uh, just who the hell is she anyway, which was a, they're all graphic novels. So yeah. Very awesome. cool. I'm going to have to get my hands on that. So mm. you guys go look for those. And, <laughs> and Laura's yeah. book as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's the one. <laughs> yep. Yes. Right here. I'm getting my copy personally next month. <laughs> ah, oh, cool. <laughs> yes. um, and we are praying for every one of you who are watching, no matter where you are or what you're doing. We are all sending love to everyone and voting all of your victory. Please do continue to pray for us and our mission as well. And um, my parents and just all the stuff going on in the world. Uh, every one of you have your version of things going on. And please know that I am all, always praying. We are always praying for you guys and lifting you up and seeing you in your highest. And have a wonderful day. Love you guys so much. And we will talk soon. Bye. Bye.